Okay, so again, let's we're going to take our example and we're going to make it a little larger uh, and say uh, s to the ball factory adds a square. way. Right, so S adds a square. Okay, a somewhat faint green square. There's another square. There's another ball. There's a flashing ball. Okay. So now I have three. I have three kinds of objects. I have balls. I have flashing balls, and I have squares. All right. So that's what my system is supposed to do. So let's go look at squares. A square is like a ball, except that it is represented by a green outline square of size 20. And it has different geometry, which means that all the functions about bouncing are going to be different. Again, it's going to have pretty much the same init fields. It's going to have x, y position. It's going to have a box and a speed. Again, it's going to have is still going to have to communicate with the box about uh, the left and right edges, so all of that stuff will be the same. Add to scene will be different, because after all, it's going to be a different image. On mouse is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, on tick is going to be the same. It says, if the ball is selected, don't move it. If the otherwise, if the ball would hit the right edge, place it at the right. Excuse me. If the square, right? If the see, I wrote ball there. If the square is selected, don't move it. If the square is not selected, say would it hit the right edge? If it is, place it at the right edge, going left. If it would hit the left edge, place it at the left edge, moving right. Otherwise, just adjust the x position. Right, so place at right edge is going to be different. It used to say set bang x to be right edge minus radius. Now it's going to say set bang x to be right edge minus half the square size of the square. Place at left edge. Again, it used to say place, place it at plus left edge radius. Now it says plus left edge half the size. It's geometry. Similarly, we have the functions would hit right edge and would hit left edge. And before, we said, OK, would uh, the radius after the next tick get beyond the, get beyond the right edge? And now we say, well, it's not, we're not interested in the radius. We're interested in half the size. And similarly, Instead of the radius, we're interested in half the size. Right? That's the difference. That's the distance from the center of the square to either its left or right edges. And oh yeah, inside this is going to be much different. Right? Before, for the ball, we had nice uh, square root of x squared plus y squared calculations. Now we're just doing some um, compare the x's and compare the y's. This, I believe, is actually. Uh, almost the same as some code that we looked at back in about week two. OK, well, let's see. Ball factory, eh, it's no longer just a ball factory. It's now a ball and square factory, but I didn't change the name. Right. The only thing uh, that's changed is now I say, uh, if the key event is an S, uh, send this add object square. OK, so, oh, here I had add ball. Here I had flash, add flashing ball. Now I said add object? What's up with that? 
Right, so here I had add ball, add flashing ball. I said, now nah, wait a little minute here. Um, I want, gee, can't I unify those? And the answer is, why, sure. The recipe we had back in lecture three will work just fine. So I'm going to write a function called add object class, right? The only difference between add ball and add flashing ball is the name of the class. Right? And in racket, classes are ordinary values. We define them with define. That means they're ordinary values. So I can pass a class as an object, as a value, as an argument to a function. So I can say add object class. And so I just say new class, x first the center, y second the center, b box, speed, speed. Now there are two things to notice here. First of all, not every class is an appropriate argument to this function. So I'm going to put in an, an invariant here, a where clause that says the class must be initializable via new class x number, y number, b box, box, speed number. So I have written an invariant that has to be satisfied at every call to add object. I couldn't put an arbitrary class in here because this list might be too many init fields or it might have not enough init fields. So the only classes that make sense are classes that are, in, that are initializable with these fields. The second thing is that I'm using classes as ordinary racket values. This is something you can do in racket. You can't do it in most languages. In most languages, whether it be Java or C sharp or F sharp, probably Ruby and Python, though I might be wrong about that, you just can't do that. Okay? You can't pass a class, a class name as a value. So racket may be impoverished in some ways, but it's really good in others.